Graham, uh, John 21. And uh, the choir is going to give us a selection. And, uh, and we just going to have a good time here the Lord. Have a good time in the home. And by now 
John 21, John 21, verses uh, 1 through uh, 6. 21, 1 through 6. Yeah. Uh, this is what the gospel writer recorded. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way showed he himself. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana and Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter said unto them, I am going fishing. They said unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a boat immediately, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat and ye shall find they cast therefore and now they were not able to, to draw it in for the multitude of fishes you may take your seat throw your net on the right side You know, saints, it is, it is, uh, it is uh, significant to me that um, oftentimes the theme of the message that this text uh, is designed to convey that is often missed. And I must admit to being one of those ministers that uh, even having been trained to always uh, do what we call an exegetical study of the text, make sure you, you draw out those elements that are, uh, are, are cogent and that fit the needs of the people, but also convey what Jesus is trying to tell us that sometimes we get so caught up in what we think that we forget to ensure that we present what the Bible says. Uh, oftentimes, too much emphasis is on helping you get happy rather than helping you live a productive life. But anyway, if you think about the Bible in its totality, which I hope you do from time to time, what you will find is that there is a central theme that is that permeates the entire Bible. And that concept is if we are obedient to God, if we are obedient to God, then he will be pleased. And the result of him being pleased is he gives out blessings. And on the contrary, if we are disobedient to God, that he is not pleased. And the result of our disobedience is the withholding of blessings, or what we would call his punishment. And if you think about that, the entire Bible gives us lessons on those who were obedient and those who were disobedient. And in the entire Bible, those who were obedient understood the opportunities that God had put in front of them. 
and those that were disobedient could not see what God had in store. Let that sink in. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, it is you who has kept us down through the ages. It is you that we owe everything. Lord, I thank you for the blessing of experience. Because it has enabled me to learn through my trials. Then my weakness, you are my strength. I've learned that in my sorrow, you are my joy. I've learned that when I walk in what seems to be darkness, you are my light. So I come today asking, Father, not for a selfish thing, but asking that you would grant me, Lord, the ability to bring your word in a way that will strengthen your children. Give me, O oh Father, the will to yield to your guidance. Help me to be strong in spirit and in my faith. Lord, give me a determination to pursue your will and not my own. Lord, even when the path is difficult, when the obstacles are great, help me, Master, to not yield to temptation. Help me, Lord, not to seek the easy way but to seek the way that brings honor to your name. I thank you in advance, Father, because I know that thou art with me, because the word declared that you would be there even until the end of time. Give you all the glory and honor. Amen. look at the story. Let's look at the text. Let's look at the events as they unfolded. John says to us that after the resurrection of Jesus, he had appeared to his disciples on several occasions. And each time he appeared to them, they were struck with awe and wonder. But here, they find themselves absent his presence because for reasons that they don't understand, he has uh, gone about to do other business that his father has instructed him to do. And so when this happens, the apostles, they get somewhat perplexed, they get somewhat discombobulated, they, 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 they get to a place where they don't know what to do. So conversation comes up. What do we do now? The master is gone and we don't know what he would have us to do. Now, Peter, being the one that they were looking to for guidance, Peter says, well, I don't know about you all, but I'm going to go back to what I know best. I'm going fishing. And, and the reality is, oftentimes, when you don't know what to do, you revert back to that which you used to do. That which you need best. And that is just not an occupational thing. That is an attitudinal thing. That is a, a, a way of life. When you don't know what to do, you go back to what you were. That's why folk that are saints and who are filled with the Holy Ghost, folk who love the Lord, when they get frustrated, will go back to cussing you out. Because that's what they used to do. And now they have 
going back to what's comfortable. That's why when people find themselves in a difficult place, they go back to the fears that they used to have. They don't hold on to the hope that Jesus told them to hold on to. Because if they don't know what to do, they go backwards rather than going forward. So their decision was to what? Go get on the boat, go out and go fishing. So they leave while the sun is just still in the sky. And they began to fish. And they fish all evening and they fish all through the night. And they didn't have GPS. They didn't have fish finder. So they go to those places where fish usually hang out at. They, based on their knowledge of that particular day. That's where they go. Now, they didn't fish the way we fish today. They, they didn't have expensive rod and reels where they would cast out. They didn't have five, you know, uh, 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 rods on the boat where they just hang over the other side. They didn't, they didn't have a, a cooler full of river like and, 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 and uh, 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 chicken wings. That, that wasn't how they went fishing. No, they, 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 went, they, had, they had a net that was made out of material that, that would allow them and they had buoyant things around them and they would have to take that net and fold it in a special way and every 12 time they got to where they thought fish were, they would throw the net out and then they would pull the net back in. And this went on all night long. It wasn't a one time thing. Every time you were pulling that in and there was nothing there, you would fold it back up in that certain way and you would throw it back out. And then you would pull that net back in. And every time you threw it out, it would absorb more water. And the more water it absorbed, the heavier that net got. But you didn't keep throw, stop throwing. You would pull it back in. Because your hope was that even if I don't get them this hour, I'm going to get them next hour. And so you would pull that net back in, and after a while, when you gave up on this location, you would check with somebody and say, where else should we go? Well, let's go where we went last month. If the fish ain't here, they got to be somewhere, so let's just keep on looking. They couldn't have disappeared. They didn't grow feet. They didn't crawl out the water. They got to be here somewhere. Let's keep right on fishing. And they did that all night long. Pull the net in and throw the net out all night till the next day, until their arms became weak. Mm -hmm. Then Peter said, we've had enough. Let's go all back in, call the day. Now as they're coming back to shore, weary, hope gone, because they've caught no fish, they see a man standing on the shore. The but, but right now, they don't know who he is. There's a man standing on the shore. Have you ever been in a place where at your darkest moment, when all hope was dissipated from your mind, God could put somebody standing on the shore. And so, and so Jesus says to them, do you have any meat? In other words, have you caught any fish? You've been out there all night long. Have you caught anything? And, and, and they say, no! We, 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 we lack in any, in, in any, any produce. And he says, throw your net on the right side. Oh. <laughs> throw it on the right side. Because wait a minute, Jesus. Are you telling me to throw it on my right? Or your right? Because see, if he's facing me, his right is my left. And my right is his left. So is it the side of the boat that I throw it on? Or is it the way you tell me to throw it that I throw it that makes it right? <laughs> So, ha, 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 right? Because anytime he tells me, it's the right way to go. 
said they, they throw their neck on the right side. And all of a sudden, water that had been calm begins to jump up and down. It begins to bubble as if it's boiling. But it's not bubbling because it's hot. Yes, it's bubbling because there are so many fish yeah. now in the net that they are protruding and jumping up out of the net and it's so big they can barely pull the net in. Now, now here's what we don't know. We don't know how the fish got in the net, but it's only one of two ways they could have got in there. The first way is because they could have heard the instruction of Jesus. <laughs> Gonna make a liar out of the Lord. So if he told you to throw the net on this side, we're going to make haste and be there before the net hit the water. <laughs> the other way would have been for Jesus to change the matter that's in the water. So what was H2O now becomes an organic flesh. And so where was no fish, now becomes a multitude of fish. Now either way, if the fish heard the command and said, wait a minute y'all, we gotta get to where Jesus said before the net hit the water, that's a miracle. Or if he created the fish out of thin water, that's a miracle. But either way, the fish were on the right side where the net hit. And, and, and the Bible says that there were so many fish that, that normally the net would have break. But see, look out for a that, that hit you, didn't it? See, so normally the net would have break. But see, Jesus got a way of pouring you out a blessing. Yeah? You didn't catch it. He got a way of pouring you out of blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it, but no matter how much he gives you, he'll make way for you to receive all of it. You ever got blessed so much that I'm talking to somebody? Have you ever got blessed so much that you had to stop and say to yourself, I cannot believe all that God is doing for me at this moment in time. It seems like a dream. And I just don't want to wake up right now because I'm getting so good. So, so, so now, now, but, 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 but why, why was this particular of all the episodes why would this episode take so much precedent in the gospel? Here's what I believe. Because obedience brings opportunity. If I do what God told me to do, there will be an opportunity for me to get blessed. When folks did what God told them to do, it don't have to make sense. Let me drop that on you right now because sometimes when God says to go, you may think I need to stay. But if God say get up, it's time to get up. If God say sit down, it's time to sit down. If God say go left, I don't care what mountain is on the left side of you, then you better climb that mountain. To say this, our inability to be blessed is because we are too big for our own riches. Let me help you understand where I'm coming from. You see, you see, I've often told you all that everything God created except man obeys God's every command. You see. When the, when the fall comes, the trees don't say, hey, I ain't gonna drop my leaves. 
The tree said, even though I love these leaves, and even though these leaves make me look beautiful, if you said let them go, they got to go. I've never seen fish flying 30, 40 feet in the air. Because when God said, well, that's what they do. But humankind, because we think we are smarter than God. I know what you're saying. No, I don't. Yes, you do. Because we think we are smarter than God, we forget that he knows what's in front of us. And we don't. And so our ability, our, 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 our ability to see is so short-sighted that we act based on what we know and what we think rather than what God is telling us to do. And so we miss opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. Okay, now I know what you're saying. Pastor, I uh, know it makes sense. Well, let me tell you why it makes sense. You ain't casting your net on the right side. You throw it out there. But it ain't on the right side. Okay. Here's what I'm trying to help you see here. Look, listen. What do I learn? What do I learn? Here's the lesson, okay? Here's the deal. At all times, we must be prepared to recognize and act upon the opportunities that God puts before us. You've got to be prepared. Now, see, here's the deal. God regularly places divine moments right in front of us. Amen. Opportunities to do good, Amen. to help someone in need, right. or to share what you know about God. Everybody that know God or to always keep at least two testimonies. Really? Because you can't imagine how many times God has put somebody in front of you. And rather than you telling them something good about God, you talking about who scored the winning touchdown last night. Who, who slept with who? Who got drunk last week? Who you saw in Super 8 with, with the other person that was shouldn't have been at the Super 8? Rather than telling somebody what them good old testimonies about what God has done for you. So we can tell everything that's bad, but we don't tell everything that's good. And everybody got something that's good to say about God, and that's what ought to be on your lips. Because that's what folks need to hear. and change your plans in order to take advantage of the opportunity to serve God. You gotta be flexible and willing to change your plans. You ever had somebody ask you, 
How you doing today? <laughs> Go ahead, Anthony. And you start to tell them how you do it. Right. And before you can get two words out your mouth, they start telling you how bad a day they are. <laughs> so now it becomes a contest. <laughs> Who's having the worst day? <laughs> See, that's why you have to be willing what, to be flexible and to change your plans in order to take advantage of the opportunity. So if I ask you, how was your day? Once you start talking to me, that's my opportunity to jump in right there. To help you get out of whatever you're going through right there. I have to be willing to change my plans for you. Because I might be ready to go somewhere, but you might need me to what, say, what, say, what, say it one more time. I might need to go somewhere, but what you might need me to do? Stay right there. So you might need me to stay right there and help you work out of your situation no matter what I might be going through. I have to change my plan. I have to refocus myself so the attention is not on me, but the attention is on you. Why? Because if God wants to use me, if I want, if I want God to use me, and I don't know about you, but I want God to use me, because I know that my obedience to God will always give me an opportunity for God to use me. And I'm going to get to this in a minute here, but I'm just prime me up a little bit, that every time I allow God to use me, every time I allow God to let me be obedient and let me work that opportunity, God going to be happy with me. And every time God is happy with me, he opened up a door for me, a door for another opportunity. And every time he opened up another door for an opportunity, he always give me something for my time and give me something for taking my Chances, he always blessed me a little bit to keep me moving forward because God knows the kind of individual that I am. But I love me some reward. I love me some blessing. So every time I make God happy, God make me happy. Now, let me let me put it to you this way. So you so you follow. Write this down. Matthew 25, 29. You better read it later. Don't read it right there. Matthew 25, 29. Okay. For those of you who did not catch what I'm saying. Here's what the Bible says. Jesus. Every time God puts a divine opportunity in front of you, he expects you to take that divine, y'all reading, I didn't say read, I said read. <laughs> <God. laughs> <laughs> talk, we're talking about obedience, and y'all just decided. <laughs> you can't read and listen to me at the same time. I know you meant well. Are y'all back with me now? So I'm going to do what? I'm going to stay right there. Okay, listen. Well, this is this one. This one's there. Every time God gives you a divine opportunity, His plan is for you to utilize talents and gifts that he has given you. That's why he put them in you. Okay? Now, if I don't utilize the plans and gifts that God has given me, then Jesus says he will take them away from me. Because God is an efficient and an effective user of that which he creates. So if I'm not using it effectively and efficiently, he will take it from me and give it to somebody else. Then I know in your mind, you thought that your gifts were something that you inherited and that you could keep all of your life until you die. No, you are misguided in your thought process because every gift is a gift of God through the Holy Spirit working in you. And just like God gave it to you, he can take it away from you. 
See, I know there are folk in the choir, and I'm gonna mess with you a little bit, and that's all right. Why? Because I had to teach this thing. I know there are folk in the choir that think they were born with a great voice. That think that they don't need God to exercise that voice in a way that will bring glory to God. Well, here's what they don't understand. Just like God gave you the voice. God will take the voice away from you if you use it for the wrong reason. If you don't use it to lift him up and to give him glory, he'll take it away from you. I know there are folks that think they are great oratories. That they can talk you out of anything. They think they can talk you out of your underwear if they want to. That's what they think. But if you don't use it for God's glory, somebody talk back to me. If you don't use it for God's glory, if you don't use your gift to magnify and to glorify God, and I know you might think because there are other folk that got gifts and God let them do it, but you don't understand is God is still getting glory out of what they are doing. Even though they think they are benefiting themselves, they are benefiting God because God is using everybody the way he wants to use everybody. See, God will even use a sinner to get a saint when he wants him to go. God will use anything. And some of you know what I'm talking about because there's some sinners that took you to some wrong places and had you doing some wrong things and God allowed you to get knocked down. God allowed you to put it up in your head down. He allowed you to get so low down that you realize I cannot make it without God in my life. It allowed you to turn yourself around and tell yourself that who I used to hang out with ain't gonna hang out with no more. God will use anybody for his glory. For if you don't use it, he will take it away from you. And, but when you use it, he will double lock on it. That's what the Bible says. It's right there. Don't read it now, but go back and look at it. He will double lock on it for you. And the more, and, and listen, that's what you want anyway. See, let me tell you something, right? The silver and gold have I none. This is what Paul Peter, what Peter said. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give out unto you. Boom, rise up and walk. Let me tell you something, right? Let me give power. See, I don't need the money. Let me tell you something. I don't need the money. I don't need this silver and the gold. I just want to be used by God. I just want God. I just want God happy with me. That's who I want happy with me. I don't care if you ain't happy with me. I want God to be happy with me. I don't care if you look at me side. I want God to look at me and say, Well done. God's good and faithful church. You have been faithful over a few things. So I'm going to make you ruler over me. See, that's the blessing right there. Because you've been obedient. Because you've been faithful. I'm going to make you rule over a lot of things. I'm going to make you rule over a lot of things. I'm going to make you rule over a lot of things. I'm going to make you rule over a lot of things. Let, let, me, let, me, let me help you out in this way, because I know for some folks, uh, you need a parable. Come on, you, 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 you know how I know you need a parable every once in a while? Come on, because I preached 35 minutes on how deep is your love. And the next week, I heard folk acting like they didn't know what love is. I didn't use a pearl. So I'm going to use a pearl. All right. Parables are best done in person. So I'm coming down. When I was four years old, we lived, I lived in Durham, North Carolina. Make it fast. I lived in Durham, North Carolina. And we lived in what you would call the projects. Okay. It's called MacDougal Terrace, right? Now I'm four years old, and back then we didn't have like you have now, you know, preschool, all that kind of stuff. So you had to stay home until first grade. So I'm home with my mother, and 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 and, and she says to me, "Listen, um, I'm gonna let you go outside by yourself this time because at four I couldn't go out by myself." She said, I'm "Let you go outside by yourself this time, but do not leave the front porch." <laughs> Do not 
leave the circle. I was so excited. <laughs> I get to go outside by myself. Wow, I'm grown. Because you know, back then, you know, like, uh, back then, it ain't old yet, but I got some years old. We didn't have Central Ave, so you had a screen door, you know, and so the screen door, she had the screen door so she could look out and see me. You know, I had a little toy truck. I'm on the front porch, I'm having a great time, and I peeped back through the screen door, and I did not see her. So I said to myself, if I go in the grass real quick, and come back, she'll never know what happened. Because I saw a frog jumping. So I said, I'm going to go down there and play with the frog. So I go down there and I'm doing leapfrog with the frog. And I leap up and I come down and my wrist hit the ground. And there was a broken bottle in the grass. And it slit my wrist. Now, now y'all can't see this way back there. But do you see that cut on my wrist? That cut right now is this law, and it got cut when I was four years old. That tells you how bad it was at four, because right now, I'm many times four. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm bleeding profusely, but I'm scared to go back in. <laughs> because I know my mother, right? And so I'm, 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 I'm holding it, I'm, I'm hurting, I'm scared to go in, and one of the neighbors see me and said, Hey, you better go in there and tell your mom. And so I, 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 I go inside. I got a long face. My mama sees me, and, and she looks at the, the blood is just pouring down all over the floor. And, 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 and her, her frustration, I guess, and her fear, and this is what she said to me. A hard head. <laughs> She takes me to the kitchen and she begins to, because she, she was studying nursing at the time, she's cleaning the wound out and she says again, I told you, Mom, a hard head brings a soft body. And I say, Mama, I don't have a soft body. <laughs> and, and she said, Well, why do you say that? You know, in a tone like that. I said, Because you taught me that. Girls are made of sugar and spice <laughs> and everything nice, and boys are made of snakes and snails and puppy dog tails. So I don't have a soft body. I got a hard body because that's what I'm made of. Is, is that? And she's looked at me, and that's, that broke the ice. She, she smiled. Now, I guess because she said, This little idiot. <laughs> And she kissed me on the forehead, and she kissed my arm, and she said, a mother's kisses will cure, cure all things, okay? Yeah, and, and, and I know it was nice, everything going through, after y'all going wild, and where she did it. And so I get managed up, and I'm walking to the front door. She said, where you going? <laughs> I'm going back on the porch, like you said, at the field. She said, oh, no, 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 no. You can't go back on the porch. I said, my mama, I'm going to be obedient this time. I'm going to stay on the porch. And she said, oh, no. She said, because you were disobedient. And yeah. she didn't use these terms. This is what she was saying to me. You have missed your opportunity. Yeah. Because you were disobedient. You can't go on the porch no more. Then my point is, some of y'all out here is getting off the porch. <laughs> told you what to do, but you're disobedient, and you done left the porch. And because you left the porch, that's why you've been going through so much pain. That's why you're bleeding right now. Because you got off the porch. But it's alright. Guess what? Because you can come back to the porch, you can come back in the house, and God will bandage you up, God will fix you up, and the Holy Ghost will kiss you on the forehead, and then kiss you on the arm, and he'll make it all better, and he'll bring you back into the house, and you'll be able to enjoy all of the blessings of the Lord. If we are obedient, 
opportunities will be there. And if you act on the opportunities, God will bless you. I've said this a countless number of times. God loves a mouthpiece. He loves advertisement. He loves it. That's why the Bible says what? Your actions should be in what? That God is the glory out of your life. That they see your good works and glorify your God who's in heaven. And the more you do that, the more God gets the glory. And the Bible says what? The more he blesses you. That means let him give the glory out of your mouth. I mean how you talk to people. Come on. How you, how you interact with people, how you serve people, right? Sometimes you have to stop thinking about yourself. Think about the other person, right? Be willing to say, what, you know what? I will what? Get out of me for you, right? I will be willing to be flexible for you, right? All right, let me leave you right there. Because somebody got off the porch, and you need to be baptized. Now, what am I saying? Uh, we all started out on the porch. We all started out in a place where we had not the full knowledge of who God is. So we left the porch. Now, God is saying, come on back to your energy life. Let me get you back to life. Okay. So if you're here today, if you have not received Christ as your personal Savior, you have left the porch. You say, come back home. If you haven't left, if you haven't given Christ your life, come back on the porch. So if you're here today, the doors of the church are open. If you don't know Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to come on down.
is because you listen to them. And he's saying, and I have told you in countless times, in all the congregations, you're supposed to say to the devil, when he come at you, get thee behind me. She said, I did just what you said. I said to the devil, get thee behind me. And Satan said, girl, you sure look good for me. Let God's children say, Amen. Amen.